Hello, this is the Monday show. Let's have another go at this, shall we? A week just happened, so here are some of the things that happened in it. Last Monday, Pope Francis angered the Turkish government when he described the killing of around one and a half million Armenians by the Ottoman Empire 100 years ago as the first genocide of the 20th century. This is a hugely contentious issue for Turkey. They have always said that while crimes and deaths did occur, it wasn't a genocide, and the denial of what most historians agree was a planned genocide of Armenians is laced through the heart of not just Turkish history, but the very establishment of the country as we know it today. Even Turkish history textbooks describe Armenians as traitors, and that what happened was actually necessary in the fight against Armenian separatists, and not a genocide. Not acknowledging this dark piece of history was integral to establishing Mustafa Kemal Atatürk's vision for a modern Turkey on his way to becoming president in 1923. But having the man known as the father of the Turks linked so strongly to what historians agree was a genocide remains and may always remain a very delicate issue. Hillary Clinton officially hit the campaign trail on Tuesday in what many think could be the most expensive presidential campaign ever. This does slightly fly in the face of her position to reform campaign financing, which is a massive problem in politics generally, but particularly in the US, where the amount of time officials spend trying to get donations, rather than actually governing, has been called into question over the last few years, as have various scandals and conflicts of interest that have run throughout the US political system. The ongoing stories of European and particularly British young people apparently going to join ISIS in Syria has now hit the political establishment. The son of a Labour councillor in Birmingham was detained in Turkey with eight of his relatives as they tried to cross the border into Syria. He was then arrested on his return to the UK. The councillor, Shaquille Ahmed, said he thought his son was on holiday, but the continuing radicalisation of young Muslims outside of the Middle East is on the one hand supporting calls to help fund groups that work within Muslim communities to try and prevent the online grooming of ISIS recruiters taking hold. However, it has also increased anti-Islamic sentiment, with the main parties choosing largely to ignore the issue rather than trying to dance around something complex and polarising this close to an election, which is sort of depressing in of itself. The head of Germany's air traffic control agency said the tragic crash last month of a German wings plane raised the question of whether authorities should have the technology to take over a plane from the ground. Probably, yeah. Lord Neuberger, the UK's most senior judge, has said that white judges could be subconsciously biased against poor or non-white defendants. This is really an indictment of the whole legal system. While it is widely known that America imprisons more people per 100,000 citizens than any other country, what is less well known is that the only country with a greater racial disparity in prison is the UK. Confronting this actually involves confronting a huge array of economic and social factors, and unfortunately, when something requires an academic prosecution of complex political ideas to engage and improve the mindset of society, needing to employ empathy with an often vilified strata of society to improve life for all, usually everyone just thinks, ah, f*** it. On Saturday, the Bloomberg trading system went down, including the one used by the UK government. So they had to postpone the planned sale of three billion pounds worth of debt. That's right, selling debt. Here is some less than being a thing. Would you like to buy it? The economy. On Sunday, the second coming of Tony Blair was marred in more controversy as his role as Middle East peace envoy was called into question. It was revealed he had signed a contract to help the Colombian government decide what to do with £2 billion worth of profits from mining deals. Blair's contract was actually being paid for by rich rulers from Abu Dhabi, who he had got close to thanks to his position as Middle East Peace Envoy, a position he is now expected to resign. After a boat full of migrants capsized off the Italian coast yesterday, the death toll began to rise higher and higher, perhaps now nearing a thousand. It was thought to be caused by the migrants ignoring instructions to stay still as smugglers packed the boats to so many people that even slight movements could capsize the vessels. 
In Europe, governments are in talk with how to deal with the issue. There are many reasons people try and gain entry to Europe from Libya and other parts of Africa and the Middle East, but strong border policies often leave migrants in limbo or being deported back to countries they risked their lives to escape. Relaxing borders could fuel anti-immigration sentiment that has been growing in popularity across Europe in recent years. However, with tens of thousands of migrants trying to get into Europe every year, and over a thousand dying in a single year before the weekend's incident, the talks in Luxembourg look like they could be a worrying stalemate.